Hello there guys and welcome to another one of my real life range tests. Today we are testing the brand new Nissan Aria and this is quite an interesting car. I can tell you from the get-go that I like it very much but today we are not here to discuss its design or its interior which is prime stuff by the way but we are here to discuss its performance and especially the kind of range you should expect in a cold winter day like today as you can see there's plenty of snow around so it's really cold out so we have to adjust our expectations to this kind of weather now let's take a closer look at the car I'm gonna show you around it and then we're gonna talk about the testing procedure this is it and it looks absolutely Gorgeous. I didn't expect to like it this much um, But I have to say that the pictures don't do it justice. So this is the Nissan Aria This is basically the second EV from Nissan from the Japanese manufacturer after the Leaf Which was a pioneer back in the day the Leaf was for many years the best-selling electric car in the world because well It didn't really have any competition. So this is the their second take at an electric car and of course it had to be a C-segment crossover model Yes, this is a uh, C-segment car. It's roughly 4.5 meters long So it's not as big as you would think judging it by the videos and the photos you see online But the design is actually breathtaking. I love this front end that's completely broke out in order to make it as Aerodynamic as possible. I like this copper color on the outside and I like the daytime running lights as well. So if you want to buy an Aria, you should know that this is a coupe model. So you can see the roof line dropping towards the back. So its rivals would be cars like the Skoda Enyaq Coupe, for example, or the Volkswagen ID5. If we're to judge it solely by its design, but other rivals would include the Kia EV6, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, or the Tesla Model Y but I have to tell you I really like the way this car looks so we have 20 inch wheels on this one um, these are the biggest you can get they have been flow optimized as you can see and we are running on Nokian winter tires they will not help in terms of range now if we're talking about the specs well you sh you should know that there are a couple of power choices available and you can have it with all-wheel drive or uh, front wheel drive so we have the front wheel drive 242 horsepower version over here with a battery uh, that adds up to 87 kilowatt hours of storage capacity in the floor so 87 kilowatt hours and 242 horsepower and according to Nissan this should give us a range of over 500 kilometers but that's in ideal situations ideal driving conditions as you probably already know I'm not expecting this car to get 500 kilometers of range but we will see even the rear end is pretty pretty awesome so let's take a look at the interior because the interior is actually even better this is the Rear seat, um, the rear bench, if you will, if you will. Um, we have the Napa blue leather in here. I love the stitching. I love the design. It looks absolutely brilliant. We have good quality plastics all around. Uh, we have soft touch plastic over here. We have Alcantara over here, blue Alcantara leather over here. So everything looks and feels great. Of course, there is a bit of scratchy plastic at the bottom, but it's not as bad as on its rivals. And I'm thinking about the ID models here, which have really, really bad materials inside. Even the seat bags are covered in this textile finish that looks and feels absolutely great to the touch. But let me just show you the front end, the front seat. So, uh, these are the front seats. They look and feel great to the touch. Also, Napa leather. That's a center console I'm gonna talk about later. And this is the interior. And it looks absolutely brilliant. And the fit and finish is impeccable. I, did, I really didn't expect this from a Nissan, but this car definitely feels premium. It feels premium in a number of ways. Now, once you get inside, you'll notice the steering wheel flat at the bottom, just like, it's uh, in fashion these days. We have two spokes with a number of controls over here. And I actually like the start button. It's a power on button. It doesn't say start stop. We have a nice animation on the screen. 
And this is the infotainment system. This is the instrument cluster. They could have worked more in these regards. The infotainment screen is a bit laggy and a bit slow, um, and the graphics aren't really up to par with what you expect these days. I mean, look at these graphics. There's noticeable input lag, and um, yeah. You can configure this, but it doesn't really look great. And it, it's kind of slow in responding to your inputs. But I love this hidden tech feature over here. Basically, you don't have any buttons and you only have like a trim over here, but you can control the um, HVAC, for example, or other functions of this car, just touching this wood trim, which is absolutely brilliant. I love this setup. This is the volume button. I actually love this because it's a rotary knob and you can actually use it back next for the media presets are over here. So if you press down, it's back. And if you press up, uh, it's uh, next. The hazard button is over here, uh, but that's not all. This center console is quite impressive as well. So first of all, we have buttons over here that can allow you to adjust the position of this center console which is pretty awesome. The gear shift lever, of course, is over here. Uh, we have buttons of also Shytech over here for different functions of the car, from e-pedal to uh, auto parking mode, driving modes. But also we have close and open buttons over here for something, right? And at first I didn't know what they would do, but if you press on them, you have a hidden storage compartment in the dash. How cool is that? This might just be the coolest glove box compartment I've ever seen. Of course, storage space over here. We have a wireless charging port for your phone. And once again, the materials used are pretty awesome. I mean, just look at this Alcantara on the dashboard. Pretty, pretty awesome. Now, let's talk about the range test. So, so far I drove this car around town and I cover 25 kilometers with it at an average energy consumption of 26.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers covered. Um, now, since I don't have a lot of time, I will jump outside the city limits and gonna test first the car outside. So on a series of B roads and on the highway, and then I'm gonna finish the inner city test. But we still have 92% of the battery charge left and an estimated range of 342 kilometers. So not quite the numbers Nissan claims, 500 kilometers of range, but not too shabby either. So what I'm gonna do now is hop on a series of B-roads, drive this car over there and then do an update as to what kind of energy consumption figures you could expect on a series of B-roads. And then we're gonna hop on the highway and see the, the, how this car behaves in that um, at 120 kilometers an hour on the highway. 120 kilometers an hour because this is the most common speed limit in Europe. Over here in Romania, the speed limit is 130 kilometers an hour, but whatever, I'm gonna try to keep it at 120. Um, the exterior temperature isn't great. It's eight degrees Celsius right now. I'm not gonna cut on any creature comforts. I'm keeping the AC at 22 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna keep everything uh, on just like a normal driver would, just to see what kind of realistic numbers we can get. I'm not gonna use eco mode either. I'm, I am going to use e-pedal, but that's understandable. And um, that's about it. Now, I'm gonna do an update once we finish the B-Road section. Okay guys, so we just finished the B-Road section of our real life range test. 
let's take a look at the numbers we got so as you can see since my reset so once i left the city i reset the trip computer i covered 43.2 kilometers with an average speed of 70 kilometers an hour and the average energy consumption shown right now seems to be 16.3 kilowatt hours but it was closer to 16.5 when i pulled off the road in order to film this video we still have 80 percent of the battery charge left and the temperature didn't improve and we are running on winter tires with this kind of fuel consumption energy consumption sorry about that um the car could cover over 500 kilometers with a single charge considering the usable capacity of the battery is 87 kilowatt hours so the nissan claim is true in this kind of exploitation so with an average speed of 70 kilometers an hour but let's see what kind of numbers we get on the highway and then inside the city stay tuned Okay guys, so we just finished the highway section of our real life range test. Um, well, we didn't finish it yet, but we're about to pull off the highway. So as you can see, the average energy consumption is 28.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers covered at an average speed of 124 kilometers an hour. Then we covered almost 55 kilometers. That means you should expect about 300 kilometers of range on the highway at this pace which isn't bad considering the exterior temperature and the high average speed uh, but it's quite far off from the claimed figures for the nissan aria the figures claimed by the car manufacturer so now we are going to enter the city and we are going to continue our range test inside the city to see what kind of efficiency we get in a busy uh, city scenario Stay tuned. Okay guys, so we just finished the inner city range test for the Nissan Aria and uh, I have some very interesting results for you guys. Let's take a look. So these are the numbers I got 21.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers covered. Uh, that took me about six hours to complete and I covered 111.8 kilometers during this cycle. Uh, at an average speed of 29 kilometers an hour. So given that the car has an real um, has a usable capacity of 87 kilowatt hours you should probably be good for about 400 kilometers around town which is good considering the exterior temperature is pretty low and i didn't cut on any creature comforts i think this these are pretty good results so 
to recap we have 400 kilometers around town that's the minimum i think you could get even better results uh, 530 outside the city limits on b roads at an average speed of 70 kilometers an hour and up to 300 kilometers on the highway at 130 kilometers an hour so pretty good results in my book considering the conditions i am impressed by the nissan aria overall but stay tuned for my complete review which is coming in a week on this channel so don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notification to be um, notified whenever the review goes online until next time don't forget to like share and of course subscribe and don't forget to feed your passions ciao